Hello, I am Stephen Jung. I am a member of the black team. This will be my second BGA Cup. What an honor it is to represent the black team. All right, so I read that script. Now I can answer the questions. Question number one. What's it like hitting a drive 150 yards? Um, I believe this is a question from Logan. It's a great question. Um, personally, I think there's a lot of skill that goes into being able to hit your driver less than you can hit your seven iron. So um, a lot of people might, might make fun of me for, for the lack of distance and the lack of overall power, but you know, I, I, I view it as a, as a point of skill of being able to, to hit your seven iron, your six iron further than your driver. And it might give me an advantage here, here or there. So, you know, what's it like hitting, hitting it though, 150 yards? Um, I think for the fact that nobody else can do it, it, uh, it actually makes me feel pretty damn good. Okay, question number two. Say one mean thing about each member of the blue team. All right, so I, I believe this is a question from Kevin because he always mentions how it's difficult to, to make fun of me or, or rip on me because I, I appear to be a nice person, but um, it, it may have not come from Kevin. Uh, so one nice, or say one, mean, say one mean thing about each member of the blue team. Uh, okay, um, let's see, Kevin, um, hmm, one mean thing. Um, I don't know if it's a mean thing, but Kevin, I think, is the most irrationally confident human being I've ever met in my life. Um, so, you know, if you count that as a, as a bad thing, um, yeah, he being the most irrationally confident person, um, that would be my one thing, but hey, I mean, that might, that might be a positive. Um, let's see, I guess next, uh, I'll go with Logan. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Um, Logan is just too good looking to say anything bad about, so Sorry, can't, can't say a mean thing about him, you know, when you're that good looking, you know, you can't say anything bad about him. Um, Lou, um, I, I, can't, I can't use the same answer that I just gave, gave of Logan with Lou. Uh, let's see, one, one, uh, one mean thing about uh, each member of the blue team. Um, I don't know if Lou does it anymore, but um, when he used to do his practice swings, he would, he would like stand up, what's the right word? Like perpendicularly to his actual target line. And so you could actually be in the way of his, um, of his practice swings. And then he would always try to take a divot. So very commonly he would just spray a divot or spray like some, some dirt or, or, or a divot, um, in your direction when you are, at a 90 degree angle from his target line. I, I thought that was kind of um, unnecessary. I, I, don't, I don't know if he does it anymore, but um, yeah, that was, that was kind of dumb. Um, and then Nathan, um, you know, for as much as I've played with Nathan, I think I've only, like he and I have only shared maybe 30 words with one another, with each other. So um, I, don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, one, one bad thing, uh, about Nathan. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I might circle back to it. You know, let me answer the rest of the questions and then if something sticks out to me, I'll, I'll get back there. Uh, number three, Wu has been known to jump in ponds after securing the cup. What do you think a black team celebration might look like? Um, so, so Eric's celebration, I, I think can either go one of like three ways. Um, number one, he'll be too tired to celebrate. Um, number two, he's so desperate for a win that he might celebrate in a very, um, in a very enthusiastic manner. Um, or number three, you know, maybe he'll be too high or too much on drugs to really understand what's going on. So I think that, that could be one of three things. Um, I think 
Kyle will be pretty mellow. Um, so I think Sneaky Riley would be the most, um, you know, the most enthusiastic about it. Um, I mean, me personally, I'll just be like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, and then <laughs> kind of move on. But um, yeah, I don't know if um, we'll have anybody jump in ponds. Um, like personally, I'd be too lazy to like dry myself off and go through all that stuff afterwards. Um, so I don't know, like, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't thought about a, a celebration. Uh, sorry, like that, that, that's a terrible answer, but, uh, but I'll have to answer it anyway. Uh, what is your furthest hole out ever? Uh, I don't know if this counts. I was playing on a par three course one time. Um, and it's a course that, uh, I was just able to play through over and over again. So I played it through like three different times. And so the first time I played from the blues, the second time I played from the whites, and the third time I played from the green, or from the from the reds. And I hold out from like 65 yards out from the from the red tees. I, I don't know if that counts, but that was my furthest. Well, other than that, it's probably like a 30 yard, like, 30 yard, like just pitch shot or something like that. Uh, what is a bet you like this weekend? Um, so I'm taping this on like, Sunday, sorry, Monday, uh, early afternoon. So the weekend has passed. Uh, I won a couple of bets though. I, I had Ohio or I had Notre Dame plus 17 and an obscure game, Appalachian State, North Carolina. I had like over 56 and the final score of that game was like 61 to 59. So it's very, um, it's pretty uncommon with a game where its total is like 59 and one team gets over it. Um, but just to show you that I'm not completely full of shit, I did have LSU on the money line yesterday um, and they, they lost in, in kind of comical fashion. They tied the game and then um, they tied the game on the last play of regulation or they scored a touchdown to make it 24-23 on the last play of regulation, but their kicker had his extra point blocked, so they lost that game. Um, but yeah, uh, those are my bets this weekend. Um, nothing, nothing tonight, and I'll I'll probably have a lot during the NFL uh, opening week. Uh, number six, what do you think Jason Kance is doing right now? Um, Jason Kance is a fellow who went to Southern Illinois when Lou and I did. He was in our graduating class. Uh, he was kind of an annoying creature, uh, so to speak. Um, so what is he doing right now? Um, for some reason, I'm connected to him on LinkedIn, so I know he's like involved in sales and whatnot. He's one of those people who tries to like keep a very professional persona on LinkedIn. So he will like I don't know what the like share like posts from like influencers and like whenever they say one of those like terrible management advice things like. Oh yeah, the most important thing for a manager is to listen to their employees more. And then he'll like share or like comment in that. Um, so what do I think he's doing right now? I mean, uh, I don't know. I've never thought about it, um, but I, I don't know. He was kind of annoying and usually people don't change. So I'm gonna say he's just like being annoying to, to whoever's close to him right now. I don't know. I haven't thought of Jason Kansen in like 10 years, Lou. So thanks for asking me this. Um, are you actually as nice as you seem? It makes it really hard to talk shit to you. Okay, this is definitely a Kevin question. Um, I think the the honest answer for this um, from me is probably not. Um, but the people who like I, I like to be around, who I consider my friends, um, I, I generally don't find reasons to. <laughs> to be like all that like shitty to them. Um, the other thing is like the older I get, um, like I think I just don't have the energy and I don't care enough to, to be really shitty to people. If those people exist around me, then I just stop talking to them because the older I get, the lazier I get. And it takes a lot of effort to come up with insults and, and things like that. So, um, I don't know, like those people who just, you know, who figure out that I just ignore them and, and don't don't talk to them ever again. They, they probably don't think I'm that nice, but you know, it's just my kind of life philosophy. I, you know, I'm just too lazy to, 
to 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 care about people that uh that I'm not really uh, fond of. But you know, you know, I'm fond of fond of uh, everybody here in the BGA tour. So that's why it probably appears that I'm I'm as nice as I am as I am. Uh, the favorite club in my bag right now, and my least favorite. Um, hmm. This is interesting. I mean, my favorite club might sneaky be the 150 yard driver because uh, the ball flight has been relatively consistent um, for, for a little while. Uh, it's probably a tie between that and my, my seven iron. So basically my favorite clubs are, are any clubs that go 150 yards and that means my driver and my seven iron. Um, my least favorite, uh, I've had a hard time like hitting the five iron for a little while. So any of the longer clubs, um, th those, those are probably the ones that I have the least amount of confidence in right now. Um, oh, putter, but putter is my least favorite because I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just a shambolic putter at the moment. They should, um, you know, in, instead of like having our our prison system what they should just do is show every single criminal during trials um, videos of my putting and then they would probably promise to never commit crimes ever again and become very productive members of society so i'm at least going to propose that um to uh to the lawmakers of this country. So I will definitely be calling my congressperson to pitch this great idea because we all know that that, that, that works so greatly. Um, we're on question number 10. If it was up to you, who would you play in your singles match? Uh, so interesting question. Um, so this, since this is like no handicap, this is just straight up. Um, I've always had really good matches with Lou and Kevin. Uh, with Lou especially, it seems like like he and I always do something drastically different each hole. So like the holes that Lou does really well on, I'm like quadruple bogeying, and then the holes that I'm like parring or bogeying, like Lou will shoot like a nine or something like that. So it makes it like entertaining, it makes it interesting, and it always keeps um, both of us in it. Um, Kevin and I haven't had too many matches together, but um, I think we're, you know, roughly in the same neighborhood. So um, the last time that we played uh, together, like I jumped out to an early lead, then he came back and then it was kind of back and forth after that. We, we, we both like had really like decent moments on, on each individual holes. And um, it was actually like a, a match that was decided on the 18th. So those are the two um, that would probably be the most, um, the, the tightest, the most entertaining, and the closest. So like a lot of stakes towards the end. Um, I tend to think Nathan brings the best out of me for whatever reason. I mean, it, it may have just been coincidence that I was paired against him a lot uh, last year during BJ Cup and I went 3-0 and one. But um, you know, if there's somebody who does bring the best out of you, you, you wanna play them. But um, you know, last year I couldn't take all the credit in the world of uh, like, you know, Kyle, Kyle did his part before um, kind of his uh, mental breakdown <laughs> uh, last year. And um, I actually really enjoyed playing with Vito last year. So it's a, it's a little bit of a shame that he won't be out there uh, today with, with or um, this time with the black team. But um, yeah, yeah, Nathan usually brings the best out of me. So um, if I had to choose one, I, I would choose that him because, you know, I, I'd rather play well and, and all that good stuff. Um, I think this is a question from Logan. Do you agree that you are a sandbagging son of a bitch? Uh, I don't. I think that I suck at golf and my handicap and my scores reflect that. Um, but I just suck quite a bit less um, from maybe 16 months ago. Like early last year, I was probably shooting, you know, like 110 to like 118. Um, and then we played Thunderhawk where I shot a hundred and then after that, um, you know, it was consistently like at least like probably mid 90 ish. Uh, and so, you know, I went from like being a 110, 115 player to a 100. So I don't know how that indicates that I'm a sandbagging son of a bitch. I, I'm like a 19 handicap. <laughs> I think that fits right where, in, where I'm, uh, where I'm at right now. So, um, 
Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I disagree. I think it's, uh, I think maybe I should even change my nickname uh, on the Discord chat. Would you rather see peace between the two Koreas or the blue and black team? Huh, interesting question. Um, interesting question. Uh, I, I think <laughs> I can't even come up with a funny answer right now um, because I think peace between the two Koreas would only come if there were actually like a war <laughs> that broke out. Um, but, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I can honestly say that this is a question that I've never thought of before. And so I'm, I'm kind of reading it the first time here. And um, well, what I would rather see, though, is a uh, peace between the blue and black team, because that's happening in a matter of a few days. Um, the other thing, peace between Koreas would uh, probably happen um, too many years from now. And to my previous point, I'm getting lazier and lazier as the years go by, so I, I don't think I'll have the patience to, to live out all that, even though it probably has more positive uh, global consequences. But but maybe not. I mean, you know, BGA Cup, what's more important than that um, at this moment in time in, in world history? All right, uh, we are in our final three questions. Um, pick one player who you think will step up and one player who could crumble. Uh, so I'm guessing this is a question just generally between, um, or not between, um, combined with both teams. So I'll just pick a, I'll just pick a couple of players. Uh, one player who I think will step up. Um, hmm. You know, Lou's been playing a lot and playing really well this year and, uh, I think he, he always has the ability to shoot a pretty good score relative to his handicap. Um, so I think he's a person who can, who can step up. Um, one player who could crumble. Hmm, crumble is, I mean, I can certainly crumble. You know, I've done that in the past and that's, that's uh, a likelihood here. Um, hmm. You know, I played with Riley for a couple of his uh, less productive rounds. I think he's a candidate who could crumble. Um, I know Kyle will be the, like probably the the most popular answer of this. I actually think Kyle is gonna gonna do just fine. Um, I think he his game is layered enough where if he's not striking the ball off the tee particularly well, he could still you know recover pretty nicely. Um, so I'd probably hmm. It's a good question of who could crumble up. I'll probably go with, with Riley because this is also his first uh, BGA Cup. So, you know, the, the little unknown factor there. Um, you know, it's, it's also a lot of golf too, with 36 holes and, you know, you don't sleep in your own bed. And I don't know how many times he's experienced that in this capacity either. So uh, I'll, I'll go with that. Um, overall score predictions, um, I, I don't, know how many total matches or total total points are in play um but my prediction is that uh black team will have this um either wrapped up or virtually wrapped up after uh let's see after 54 holes so after the first three 18 hole whatever things we play um you know it, it might be like a situation where i don't know if dormy is considered a term um, in in these kinds of games, but um, yeah, I think uh, there's a good opportunity that things will be uh, locked up after after 54. All right, the final question: Which round format are you looking forward to the most? Um, I think alt shot will be very interesting, just because you have a lot more pressure on each shot. Uh, Chapman is a very I think Chapman will be my my favorite format because you you do like sh hit your own ball um, more often and and I, I do want to do that because you know you still want to play well and you still want to measure yourself against what you're capable of doing. But um, alt shot always brings like some added pressure. Um, you know you don't necessarily want to let your teammate down and then. Um, there's really no insurance 
uh, when you're playing all chess. So I think that's very, that's always the most you know strategic, the most interesting. Um, so I'm probably looking forward to that. And then, um, yeah, like four ball and single, I mean, that's basically the same thing. Um, so yeah, all shot enchantment, but, um, I, I like all shot, it, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. You just, there, there's just a lot more that's built into each swing, um, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to the others. But, um, you know, I, I was offering the play worst ball. Um, but you know, Eric, uh, Eric has put the squadouche on that on, on several occasions, um, which, you know, I think is complete nonsense. I, I think it's a great idea to play worst ball, um, in this, uh, in this BGA cup, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll try, I'll try nagging everybody about worst ball, uh, for maybe next year. And I think, um, especially, you know, or whenever we play abandon, like that, that'll be a great event to play abandon because we would all probably like shoot like 125, uh, if that happened, but, um. Yeah, if we were able to play worst ball, I would have picked worst ball. But um, because because I am not in charge of this group and I, I don't want to be, uh, I will settle for all chat. All right, so that wraps up this press conference. Uh, I'm Stephen Jung, representing the the black team, despite despite wearing coincidentally wearing a blue T-shirt and blue shorts. And let me see here. Mm, yep, blue underwear too. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm, uh, I'm less passionate, any less passionate, uh, about being a member of the black team. Um, you know, once you go black, you never go back. Thank you.